a Cards with Michael production. What's up, everybody? Cards with Michael here. Ooh, I am tired. We got a lot of Double Masters boxes finally today. Shipped out a bunch. And now it's video time. Uh, let's see. Today's case is NC0196. Lot. Yeah, I won't even read that number. Video has it. Let's go ahead. And of course, and this is a sealed guy. Yeah, as usual. Yeah. I'm sure you guys trust me. Yeah. Going through the loops. Okay. Let's go ahead. Open up this VIP. Open up these VIPs. And get to work. Um, so I shuffle this one more time. And we have Juan. It's our first number one. Ryan number two. And Jericho, another snipe. And we're pretty sure we have another snipe in here. That means Jacob coming in with the next snipe. And Jason will be next. All right. First one is four snipes. Let's see. Let's, see. let's get them out of the way. All right. Oh, man. <laughs> Struggling to get this inner case out. All right. Here we go. Alright, so, oops, I'm gonna get a little slip there. Okay, so the first one, going to one. One. Alright, let's get to work. I think, uh, you know, if you guys have been tracking prices with me in that, that spreadsheet, um, there, there's movement. There's a lot of movement lately. lately. Uh, if we open the card, I'll talk about it. Um, Otherwise, I don't want to just bore you with some numbers. Let's go ahead and get to opening. All right. Okay. So yeah, we're, we're going to add prices again. Pricing these takes a while. I'm not going to lie. Uh, last time we priced like 88 cards. And then we added an animation. And it just is... <laughs> It's something. It's definitely something. But one of the reasons why, ooh, that's like a $2 card. One of the reasons why I do like committing to these pricing, uh, pricing on the videos is it actually helps me understand, um, you know, Meester's Bobble, three bucks, uh, helps me understand the value of these VIPs and of a lot of these common uncommons. Cyclonic Rift Foil? All right. And a Blood Moon. All right, all right. Still sitting at the... Uh, you know, I think it's bumped up a little. It's like 27, 28. And here we go. John Avon and an Academy Ruins. Now, this one has truly lost a lot of value lately. Coming in with only about $20 of value. Got, our, of course, our non-foils. And yes, that is a John Avon Island. The most valuable card in the foil slot. You usually always get a John Avon and a Noel Bradley. Noel Bradley is like well, basically worthless. But um, yeah. Okay, so, eh, not a great start. I think the fact that at least we got some value in that Cyclonic Rift to uh, um, help, helps, of course. But, you know, single one-pack VIP snipes, they're always going to be like this, Juan. I hope you understand. Uh, there will be winners. There will be losers. And uh, overall, I mean, if you've seen us do the EV calculations on these on these uh, cases, they're, they're, always, they're always pretty good. Okay. That is the one pack snipe for one. Thank you so much for sponsoring. It wasn't that bad. And the price is over there. And Ryan, the next one. All right. Ryan, of course, uh, sent me money and was like, all right, thanks for the force of will. And I'm like, uh. <laughs> so many force of will jokes. I think one of the cool things is, uh, would be cool to open is just a pack foil uh, force of will. We haven't opened one of those ever, like literally ever. So that would be really, really cool. Um, uh, also, like I noticed that the mythic hit rate on the, uh, the foil part, the foil rare foil mythic part is pretty low. So we, we haven't really seen a lot of those. And here we go. All right. Oh, Mishra's Bobble. That's a little three. Oh, Manamorphos. Also a couple bucks of value. Maybe a little bit more than that. The plating. Blood Spore. A Thrynax. Okay. A Kemba Ka Regent. All right, here we go. Mark Teden coming in with an Urza's Mine. And Martina Pilsaroiva. Pretty sure this is a Mox. Yes, a Mox Opal Foil. Gorgeous. 
Now, uh, yeah, I think I think this is definitely one of the winners um, in the set. It's 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 sitting pretty at like seventy something. Um, it's really cool. All right, yeah, go on to the next. Got our basic lands, of course, and this one has a John Avon Plains, the least valuable one. All right, let's go ahead and sleeve these guys up. I think the John Avon Plains is like what two. I guess we'll add prices and stuff. But yeah, like uh, I was doing the numbers yesterday on yesterday's pricing and there's like 20 to 25-ish of value just from, on average, just from the ancillary cards. Like the, you know, your foil, your foil rare, foil mythics, your basic lands, your foil basic lands, and even the tokens. There's a couple of tokens, you know, actually about, honestly about a third of the tokens are at least a dollar or more. And you know, the rest of the foil tokens are, you know, they're in that, like, chump change, like, 30, 40 cents. Like, you can sell them on TCG Player. You'll make sales. They'll net maybe, like, 20 cents after fees each. But it's still, you know, it's not it's not nothing. That's a lot better than bulk rares these days. You know what I mean? All right, Jericho, here is your one-pack snipe. And because of that, I think these VIPs, like, someone noted in the comments last time, two things have to happen. Because right now, it's, like, it's, it's funny money, funny values. The singles either need a tank or the VIP sealed product needs to go up. Hey, there's just mine, a couple bucks. Um, that's just the only way to do it. Like, it just doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense. All right. The Ritual Cascade Bluffs, all right, couple bucks, no, yuck. Hey, Cyclonic Rift. So this, this thing is still, I thought it was like low 40s. Now it's like 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. This thing is, it's, you know, EDH All-Star. All right, here we go, what's next? Mark Zug, oh, that's not great. A Mythic, a Dark Confidant. Okay, that's actually a pretty good. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, rising in value, it's like in the 40s. Oh, man. Okay, well, Jericho, you definitely won out here. Um, you got a Swamp as your John Avon foil. Okay, all right. Not too shabby at all. Not too shabby at all. Let me just leave these bad boys. <laughs> Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, my, my thesis on these VIPs originally, okay, back when we had the, the magical, being able to buy these potentially at $80 wholesale, 80-something um, on TCG Player, right? There was a period of time when the four VIP packs were, were like 350 right? After taxes, after shipping. And um, that was a magical time to be alive because these vip cards have not really tanked much in value in fact they've some cards have gained in value uh notably one mythic has really started rising um recently um if we open one i'll definitely mention it maybe you already know about it maybe even watching my charts and you'll see you've seen it kind of spike i have a weighted average uh bias on the most recent um prices as well and that kind of lets you know what's what's trending up what's trending down and this card is trending straight up it is trendy all right here we go and jacob this is your one pack snipe let's see how we do let's see how we do this inner case has been eh, it's been okay so i think there's a lot of potential here a lot of potential all right here we go Mishra's Bobble, nice little value, and a Manamorphos, nice, got the, both a duo. We've seen those together sometimes and sometimes not. The Cremator, Disciple of Bolas, no, two bulk rares. Mark Teton with another Urza's Mine. All right, got a duplicate here. Let's not duplicate again, let's get a Mythic. Yes! Immediately I can tell that it is a Planeswalker just because all the Planeswalkers have been a little bit lighter. And this one in particular is Jace the Mind Sculptor. This guy has... Hey, you know, he was 150 last Monday. All right, now he's like, what, 104, 110? Yeah, it's still, <laughs> it's a lot of money. All right, got a swamp here for you, John Avon. And yeah, treasure mirror, wait, shapeshifter mirror, treasure uh, elemental. I think treasure elemental token might be actually valuable. All right, let's sleeve up these bad boys. Jacob, nice, nice, nice work. Uh, this case is very, very gorgeous. I think it's... I don't I don't disagree that they they made a good idea to uh keep the same art. I would have been sad if they made Jace look kind of like uh Karn. Which you know Karn honestly doesn't look that bad. I just uh you know I've seen better arts and I'm just, you know I don't wanna I'm mean, okay I'm gonna end it right there about the arts. I wanna appreciate all the good arts. I just don't have a preference on that one. Alright. Jason, we have two VIPs for you 
and Colton next. All right, let's let's get to work. Let's do this. This box is so poorly taped. It's like lopsided. All right. Okay. Well, two VIPs per person on this. You gotta. I don't know which we call this. A two VIP split. Okay. Jason coming in. If you're just tuning in, of course, uh, we'll be shipping out the VIP, the, the UPCs. Leslie cuts them out, my wife. Um, so, fear not, you will get those UPCs. I don't, really, I don't want them. They're, they're, they are more of a liability to me than anything else at this point because it means I gotta talk to wizards and email and then mail it. So yeah, uh, I mean, I, to be honest, I've already done that. I've already emailed them four times. I had a missing box hopper. I had some Pringles cards that were damaged all right fatal push i thought was actually worth something but turns out it's barely even a, a dollar so doesn't even get the price all right engineer explosive nice real little rare heartbeat of spring okay okay i have no idea that's worth anything and a marked heat in what <laughs> okay at least we got a power plant so we got the two mines power plant lots of urza lands in this case and what's next what is next wayne reynolds Oh yes, 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 yes! <laughs> you don't see me, but I'm doing the I'm doing the thing that you, you'll catch me on live stream. But Blightsteel Colossus, woo, sitting at seventy, pretty stable at that price, and I think it's a spicy one. I I think that one it's just it's one of the oh nice little island nine bucks of value. Uh, I'll draw a spawn elephant. Your tuck tuck. So I think uh, I I think the Blightsteel is just. It's such a unique art. Like this art is literally the iconic image of the set. And so I think it has some room to grow. <laughs> Just like a lot, like, you know, I think a couple of cards like Academy Runes, for example, wouldn't be a, would be one of the cards where I'm like, okay, I can see this, you know, it's slowly dipping because it's just not very in demand. Like you never need four of them. In fact, you never need four Black Seals, but I could see the collector value in that, you know? All right, Jason, first pack, not too shabby at all. Not too shabby at all. Next pack. Okay, here we go. All right, let me see what goods do we have today. Oh, and by the way, on the foil commons, the only foil commons I've seen that have any value are basically the Urza lands. Um, there's a bunch of foil uncommons that have value. Mishra's Bobble, of course, one of them. Obliepti, if we have yet to see one. Ah, Sharum the Hegemon, a nice little foil rare here. And what is this? A Chuck Luch? Oh, wait. Oh, no. We skipped the next rare. Mana Echoes! That's not a rare. That's a Mythic! Nice. Nice. That's a <laughs> spicy hit. Cyclonic Rift, of course. We talked about it. 40-something, 40 48. Inf insane amounts of value. Kev Walker. What did Kev Walker do? Aha! Sword of Light and Shadow. Oh, the art is so gorgeous. We haven't seen one of these in a long, long time. I love it. Uh, okay. Oh wait, let's look at let's look at it again. Oh man, that's so nice. That's so nice. Okay. Well, back to back mythics for Jason. I think both packs definitely broke uh definitely did better EV than than payment. Um so okay, all right. So far this case has been pretty solid. All right, let's sleeve up these three cards. It's always good when you have to sleeve three cards in the VIP pack. Honestly, you know, I know some collectors that sleeve up all the foils, so it's very, very likely. <laughs> That we have, you know, situations like that. But Mana Echoes, gosh. That's a really... I should be putting it in this pile, of course. Sorry about all you guys of OCD. Um, yeah, what else to say? Just super, super good. Two packs. You know, that we don't need force in every pack to be good. Really, truly. Um, but, you know, it doesn't hurt. All right, Colton, two packs for you. Let's get some something good. Uh, Colton, of course... Also known by Grim Entertainment. Uh, he is a YouTube-er, but also a supporter of this YouTube channel. 
You'll see him kind of posting, commenting around. Hey, could you comment? Hold on, you can comment something witty. I'll, I'll highlight your, your comment. I'll get you some exposure like that. All right, what's the deal? Just think of something witty. I don't know. What is possibly witty? I mean, you always comment on the videos anyway. So maybe I'll just whatever, but that's the challenge. Think of something witty. Witty? Witty? Anyways, let's see what your first pack looks like. All right, here we go. There's this tower. Nice little bit of value there in the common slot. Dollar or two. Maybe two and and a quarter, something like that. Gelatinous Genesis. Ah, love that. Nice little wind. Ooh, nice little wind condition for, uh, of course, the Urzalans. Oblietti. Oblietti. Cogwork Assembler. The Rampager. Skull Mulcher. And a Sun Forger. Nice little foil rare. And what is next? Darkin coming in for Progenitor Mimic. All right, not, not too bad. Not too bad. Dando Santos. Ah, yes. Stone Forge Mystic, the most valuable rare still. Coming in at about 55, I think, 50s. And <laughs> look at that. And a Sword of Fire Nice. Jeez. Talk about a value pack. That was a good one. That was a good one. Oh, planes here. Soldier, human soldier, golem, servo. Okay, all right. Well, <laughs> I mean, if you got two VIP packs and walked away with just the contents in this one, I think it'd already be okay. Like, it wouldn't be that bad. It wouldn't feel that bad at all, really. But we still have another one to open. And this inner case hasn't shown us, like, the super goods. So, I don't know. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. All right. Let's see. Let's see what we can get here. All right. Here we go. All right, all right, all right. Just a little ASMR mode. Huh? Sun Forger again? Okay, all right. Master of Ethereum. A Toxic Deluge. Look at that. By Richard Kane Ferguson. And what is next? Thomas and Baxa? What did Thomas and Baxa do? Is it like a sword? No, it's a Phyrexian Metamorph. Oh, oh, we struck out there. We definitely struck out there. All right, all right. A mounted foil here. Oh, you know, Plains foil. Wolf Golem. Servo Treasure. Okay, all right. You know, okay, I guess well, we can't, can't always be winners, but uh, I think net overall we're still good. It's just uh, that was a bummer. It's such a big bummer. All right, now I know. If I see Thomas and Box in the second slot, trouble is a brewing. Metamorph, of course, won those cards. That I think the art is amazing. Look at that art. But the value, I don't think it's going to be there for forever. It's just not one of those cards that, that sees that type of play, you know? All right, Colton. Got your two packs split down. And now we are on to Donnie coming in with, uh, why do they call it this? VIP Mega Inner. Uh, this is one, of, of course, you'll see these stamps. The package certificate on um, all VIPs that are that have been properly uh, sold to you, not tampered with. Like if someone were to take out this tape, you would be able to see pretty easily, uh, even if they replaced it with soft tape. Um, that is one of the things that you can use to protect yourself. So just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. All right, four VIPs. Let's get to work. Let's get to a work for a very important person, Donnie. VIP number one. Uh, 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 okay. All right. These have been opening a lot easier than the last case. The last case, for some reason, was just a struggle. It was a real struggle. All right. Here we go. Uh, yeah, yeah. All the goods. All the goods. All the goods. All right. Dark Seal Citadel. Sure. Ash Barons. Nice, nice. Sarah Sphinx. Basalt Monolith. All right, all right. Three or four bucks. A dismantle. I don't know why I slow rolled that. Open the vaults. All right, all right. Nice little combo card in EDH and a savage word. Ah, lame. Next crop rotation. All right, all right. Uh, one of the cards I think that has room to grow. I mean, if you're a sub 20 and you're played in legacy decks as a four of, you should be going up. And the art is pretty sweet too. Look at that. Oh, Mark Poole. 
I enjoy this a lot. All right. Can you imagine if there were actually four versions of crop rotation? Because he did do multiple versions for the seasons. Oh, wouldn't that be so sweet? Alternate art of alternate art foil borderless versions. All right, here we go. What's next? Jeff's... No! No! A council's judgment. Oh, every time I just see Jeff Simpson, I just... I don't know, foil force here. Clue Servo Angel. Cat. I just... I, I get a little sad. You know what I mean? Like... Because I know that he only has two toppers, and it's Council's Judgment and Meddling Mage. It's not like Mark Tiedem, which is like, you know, you could be pretty good. And, and of course, Scott M. Fisher literally has some of the best uh, possible hits. But no, Jeff Simpson, I'm so sorry, man. Your name does not bring me joy when I see it opening these VIPs. I'm sure the situation will change in the future. Maybe you'll get a nice, nice, like, different card. You know, rare, chase, mythic. But, or Double Master VIPs. Not the artist that we want. All right, on to the next one. Who's that artist? Ron Spencer. That's an art artist we want to see as well. I think all of his cards are just like huge hits. Doubling season, Mana Crypt. Hopefully at this point, you have also grown very familiar with artist names. Um, yeah, it's kind of, kind of cool because you know they make our art like Daniel Lugren. This is cool. This is cool stuff. It's not, it's not easy to be an artist. All right, Pongify, I think it's a buck or two. It's one of the few. Uh, it's like the only uncommon um, that only has value as a foil. It's like barely over a dollar. Mystic Gate, all right. Goblin Guide, nice little foil rare, all right. Oh, no. All right, can we make up for it? Can we please not have an expedition map here? Ron Spencer, Mythic. <laughs> all right, okay, that is definitely not... Oh, man, that's a good hit. Uh, you know, Mana Crypt has been dripping a little bit in value. A little Foil Forest here, Treasure, Beast, Servo Sapling. But, you know, it's still spicy, spicy. It's 200 bucks. It's the best, second best possible card we could possibly open in the entire uh, collection of VIP uh, Foil Borderless cards. Um, leave, you know, Force of Will, foil, Pack Foil might be around that value, but... It's still, oh, look at that. Look at that. Ron Spencer. What a cool card. She's so cool. He is, yeah, it's like finding Waldo. I mean, finding, uh, yeah, finding Waldo. He's, he's not in a good position. All right. Okay, well, I think just hitting a Mana Crypt in the four is already, like, we know the, the baseline of these is so high that if you hit a card like Mana Crypt, you're, you're pretty much guaranteed to have done well with the rest of the inner cases. That's just the, the internal notes that we've discovered. And of course, if you hit the Force of Will, it's just insane. It, and we've seen it is possible to get a Force of Will and a Mana Crypt in the same one. So let's suspend all belief. Hold your breath. Okay, don't hold it. Don't, don't actually hold it. I'm, that's a joke, but let's just see together as a group obliet nice little value there meddling mage there's still some value geth the lord of the vault why are you so cool yet so valueless and a mythic but also very powerful and limited so you know it's, yeah, what can you say jim pavlet coming in for blood moon all right all right gorgeous look at that look at that moon and what is next john avon no <laughs> little academy runes action okay okay Definitely not a force of will, but uh, you know, at least we've got an island here. Treasure Servo Angel Elephant. Okay, okay. All right. So I think uh, we're still even. I gotta say we're still even. That was that. We had two bad packs, I think. Like, literally, this is a very lopsided uh, EV. A lot of very high variance cards. But we still got one more. And... Um, what else I've noticed is there's always two mythics in an inner case, so we do we do go through two, and I hope that no one uses that information maliciously. Uh, one of the reasons why I always try to do 16 VIPs, I don't try to do like other random numbers, um, at least when I'm sponsoring for you guys, um, because it's just you know now that I you know I'm I'm like I'm willing to bet that this VIP like I would pay more than market price for this last VIP if I knew that it came out of an inner case. Um, I would, okay, maybe I wouldn't pay more, but I would put, assign more value 
to this last VIP. Knowing that this is what we pulled so far in that inner case, um, it's pretty safe to say that this is definitely going to have a mythic. Uh, I could be proven wrong. It's just one of those like, you know, variance things that we've opened enough. Like this is going to, we're crossing, we're opened like 220 of these at this point. Rugged Prairie, Magus of the Will, Exploration, ding, ding, ding. Beautiful. 45, 48, something like that. And what's this? Got, oh my gosh. Incorrect. One mythic only. Okay, well, this is why uh, speculators are are not good, I guess. A little swamp here. Demon, squirrel, demon soldier, copy. Okay, so I mean, <laughs> I, well, I do think really highly of Expedition Map as a card. Um, like, I, this, no way it holds a $20 value. This is so cool and it's so playable. Um, exploration, I think, uh, you know, 45, 50, that, that should be stable to me. It's a, uh, like, that's a little bit high for foil rare. Um, but uh, dang, okay. Well, Donnie, I hope, hopefully we didn't do too badly put the price up there. Um, obviously the mana crypt does help a lot, uh, but I don't know. I don't know. This one's close. This one's close. Everything I said basically about these have been, has been correct since I opened that mana crypt. All right. The last inner case. So far, this one hasn't been as spicy as the last one, but still the value is there. Anthony. We got this for you. The last inner case of, uh, what is this, number six. Case number six. Whoa. VIP down. Uh, let's go pick this up. All right. Uh, let's do a quick check. These are all one, nine, six. Did I did not switch a roo. I did not switch a roo at all. Uh, no, this one was just, it was chosen for tribute. That's what happened. That's what just occurred. Again, sorry about dropping it. Luckily, it's pretty secure, I, I would say, um, in the way it's being stored. It's a little excessive, but it's definitely secure. Okay. Here we go. Anthony, what goods are we pulling for you today? Also, a first time uh, sponsor on the chat, Panga Fire. All right, we've got something. Got on the scoreboard. Um, so really grateful, really, really grateful. What an honor and privilege, nice. Walking Ballista, beautiful, nice little foil rare here. Valued at basically the mythics. Okay, got an Academy Runes. I actually kind of like this art slightly more. Ah, no, the Borderless art is, is, is super cool. Ron Spencer, what do you got for us? A Brainstorm, okay, all right. Eh, didn't realize you also did that. I guess Ron Spencer is sometimes a hit miss. Thanks. John Avon. No! John Avon coming in with another Academy Runes. Uh, okay. All right. At least we got the Foil Island. Wolf, Mir, Germ, Eldrazi spawn. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. It's okay. There's more. More inners. Uh, more VIPs left. More potential winners. Um, you know, more opportunities to hit a home run. Still not at the, not at the bottom of the ninth yet. Eh. This walking ballista definitely, I I think it's some value. I, I got a price check, of course, but when I see walking ballista now, I'm like, yeah, that's a good one. Played in a lot of formats. Turns out artifacts like that are good. Flexible utility artifacts that can be played in any deck and castable by Mishra's Workshop. Wow, sign me up. Can infinite part of infinite combos to kill opponents. Can be played on turn two. Can't be played turn a million for a million. It's just, uh, you know, good card. Card is good. People thought that uh, it wouldn't be as good as Hangered Back Walker when it was first printed. I still remember that. They're like four mana to, to, to put another counter on it. That's an insane amount of mana. There's this power plant, of course. That's a little value. All right. Here we go. We got Greaves. All right. Are looking for it. A little mana reflection. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Gorgeous art, by the way. Look at that. Look at that art. Oh, man. Chris Seaman. What a good, what a great piece of work. Okay, here we go. Got a rare by Jason Chan. Lee, just like worth nothing. Okay. Got a Noble Hierarch. 20s. And Mark Zug. No. Whoa, 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 whoa. This 
is not what we want to see. Not what we want to see at all. Oh man, that's scary almost. Like forest. Okay. Doctor Golem Copy Wolf. Okay, all right. Uh, I really hope that we get some redemption here because that was also not that great. You're sitting at like 60% EV. That's uh eh. you know, we I've seen better. We've all seen better actually. But uh who knows? All it takes is a good spicy hit. This actually, this entire case has been on the weak side. Um, Donnie had only one mythic foil uh, borderless. That's like surprising as like as can be. I mean, we had like multiple that had four mythics just in the last one. All right. Well, let's see what we can get. Let's see what we can get. And you know, it's part of it is definitely variance. Like you can't. You can't safely say that every single case is always going to be better than EV, but on average, I keep finding that to be the case. A little power plant there. Nice little value, of course. All right, Metamorphose. Okay, okay. Getting us back into that game. Kind of the warm-up. Basalt Monolith. All right, got some small hits. Small hits. Hammer of Nizan. That's definitely a hit. Uh, Baleful Strix. All right. Printed to Oblivion. Brainstorm number two. Okay. All right, no worries, because it's blue, and the next card's gonna be blue, and it's gonna be great! Oh my gosh, I wish there was a face cam, because I literally, I just, my jaw just dropped. Like, literally, it dropped so hard, because I was thinking, I was just making that meme up. I was like, it's blue, the next one has to be blue, it's gonna be great, and then, BAM! All right. Well, this case just got spicy. Super spicy. Man, that's exciting. All right, so we got a mountain. And a ooze, worm, shapeshifter, element. Okay. Put all this draft shaft away. Um, let's go ahead. I'm going to actually grab... I sh maybe I should have done this with rays, but uh, I think I should just... Eh, you know what? I won't do that. I'm just going to sleep it. I, I was going to sleep it with a resealable, but I know that some of you guys don't, don't really know how to use those or just like get confused by it, but... Okay. That is the force of will. <laughs> the mythical force of will that we've been chasing. Got in the second to last pack. Got it with a brainstorm. In inner case, I had two brainstorms already. And an academy. Like the other one was brainstorm academy rune. So I do see that sometimes there is a bit of like color bias. But dang. Nice hit. Nice hit, Anthony. Winner of the force of will. You are the winner. Um, now we're a free roll mode. I think, you know, everything's, oh, like the hammer is like 18, I think. 20 maybe uh, everything was paid for now so now this last vip just uh congratulator congratulator uh, celebratory um opening all right nice i'm glad we could end on something good i mean that was like you know i was just talking about how this is one of the weaker vip cases that we've seen and i think all it takes all it takes is a 450 oh 450 is the price by the way that i think that these have been at for a bit now, um, going up and down. Uh, last night, I saw some 420s on TCG, and by the time I woke up, all gone. So people are definitely buying these, people are definitely selling these. People are happy to take 400 bucks, 380 after fees and on TCG and whatever. Um, oh my gosh, another mythic. <laughs> Scarab God, all right. A lot of blue mythics here. Okay, all right, helps a lot. Exploration. So this pack is paying for itself too? And oh my gosh! Oh geez! So th this is perfect. These are this is a card I wanted to talk about, and I get to talk about it at the very end, um, which hopefully leaves you guys leaves an impression on you guys. Sort of feast and time. And check the TCG prices. That thing, uh, a little mountain here, human soldier, golem copy, so everything. So sword of feast and famine has totally eclipsed sword of fire and ice. There was a period of time when feast and famine was like sub 100 like high 90s and sword of fire and ice was 150 now a sword of feast and famine is kind of in the 139 range and it's it, it's looking to kind of go up a little because like people are buying it look at the art this is completely an art move in my opinion like the art on this is so colorful For feast uh fire and ice i think it's actually arguable whether the um the the borderless version is as good as just a normal pack foil which is 
kind of has that pop, pop in color. But if I, you know, if I was just looking at, like, it has to be this. Because all of these have had multiple reprints. Like, the only reason for something to go up like that, this is definitely not competitive play. It's definitely not EDH demand that just came out of nowhere, right? Like, we know what this card is. It's, it's an art play. This is an art game. And um, that is what it is. Okay, well, awesome. I'm glad we got to open one of these. I might make that the, the thumbnail, to be honest, because I want to talk about it. Um, and I think Feast and Famine shows us, the price chart of it shows us that it's not all about, like, uh, you know, supply and demand. It's it's straight up about people liking the art, realizing that the VIPs are, are going, you know, we're not going to get any more. We might get some more, obviously, but the reprint is unlikely. So whatever is out there in the market, that's it. That is it. And uh, I'll leave it at that. Thank you guys so much for the video. And um, we'll see you on the next one.